Guys, welcome back to another tier list video. I know this one has been a long time coming. I know a lot of people have been asking for this, but I wanted to make sure that we tested these ships um, in live environments and also in Arena Commander Free Flight to make sure that we had the best tier list that we could put together. Now, disclaimer, <laughs> this is only my opinion about the current state of these multi-crew ships. This is a multi-crew tier list for pvp okay not for engaging the npcs or what ships are good for erts no 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 this is if you're in the persistent universe and you're forced to fight for your life either against another multi-crew ship that is fully crewed or against other players this is the tier list of the ships that are going to have the highest likelihood of you surviving and the lowest likelihood of you surviving so at this point, I'm sure that many folks, um, the very busy folks out there, have probably clicked away because they just want to see the tier list and that's it. But I want to explain why I put these ships in the positions I did and also what I have here called the area denial score and how that affects the ship um, moving forward. Um, I just want to say that we have a number system uh, and I took some feedback from the previous tier list. So for those of you folks who are colorblind, you should see a number uh, attached to the different settings so that it lets you know, you know, um, what tier, medium, low, or high it's actually in. So uh, before we get started, go check out this video. If you like multi-crew and you want to see what Star Citizen's multi-crew looks like at its absolute peak, then check out this video here. If not, let's get started. <laughs> You're probably thinking, oh man, you know, let's start, let's just start from the bottom up um, so people can understand. Um, so I'll briefly explain the area denial score, which is basically pretty much what it sounds like. Some ships have a lot of turrets, they have a lot of coverage, they can cover a lot of distance, a lot of area. There's no real blind spots with some ships, like for example, the Hammerhead has a very high area denial score because i mean that is exactly what it's designed to do there are no blind spots on the hammerhead um, it has a lot of guns a lot of pressure to output people so that if anything gets close to the hammerhead it's likely that it's going to get hosed um, whereas something like an 890 jump which is in our f tier cig has a few turrets sparsely put in different positions um not a lot of pressure very large very easy to hit i find the 890 jump to be exactly what it is a big floating yacht designed to make money except for not make you money make cig money <laughs> um then we move up to the valkyrie which honestly look the valkyrie is a bit heartbreaking because the valkyrie should be better the valkyrie should be better the fact that it's an e tier because like it's got relatively low hit points it's so bloody easy to hit you know um a drop ship carrying x amount of you know uh players just getting buzzed and murdered within you know 10 to 15 seconds just kind of makes me feel like you know if i'm gonna take a drop ship to the field that is the last ship that i want to take to the field <laughs> You know, hopefully the Valkyrie gets some love at some point um, because it's a cool, it's a really cool ship. It looks super tough, but it's not. <laughs> and it's got a low area denial score because it doesn't have very good arcs on its uh, guns. You know, it really uh, struggles on, on any kind of DPS output. So, I mean, you could be in a fighter and be pretty close to that thing for quite a long time before maybe... Um, you, you get pushed away from the turrets, so it, it denies very little little area. Um, then we go up to D tier, which is the 600i, which again, 600i is not terrible for PVE bounties or, or ERT missions, it's okay. Um, but in a player environment, the 600i gets absolutely, ugh, it's bad. It gets, yeah, the poor thing is slow, cumbersome, quite easy to kill. Um, and if you've brought ballistics to the field, uh, you end up killing it so much faster. It's just, it's not, I mean, it looks exactly what it looks like. It's, it's a space yacht. It's a space BMW that got a little big. You can have caviar on it, but I mean, you're not going to be winning any fights. And then we move over to the 400i, which is essentially just a smaller, less 
weaponed version of the 600 I find it's slightly faster you know it's got some options because it's got two rear facing turrets but it doesn't deny any space except for almost directly behind it so I guess what CIG is trying to do with this thing is it's designed to run away <laughs> so if it's designed to run away it's got turrets facing the rear but you know it, it just doesn't have I guess you could say the threatening presence that it should have to force fighters away from it because a lot of times um the fighters are going to hit you anyway um so until cig addresses the whole disparity between turret velocities and fighters and stuff then this 400 eyes likely gonna end up in a ditch somewhere it used to be a lot better in the previous 322 because it could actually outrun fighters now not so much <laughs> uh then we have the msr which to me, it was kind of heartbreaking because the MSR wasn't too terrible in 322, but when Master Modes comes out or came out, um, the ship just got so much slower. Um, the one really good grace it had was its speed. It was kind of like the Millennium Falcon, um, but it's not outrunning any fighters now. And, you know, it has it has OK turret coverage. You know, it's not really any big blind spots unless you're like directly, directly behind it at close range. But even then, it can just move a little bit and boom, it's got a turret on you. So, you know, it's got a decent amount of area denial. Two size three guns on both of those turrets that have really good um, field of view. So you can get around and actually apply damage. Um, and then the two for the pilot. So you end up having six size three guns. So it's not a bad... Like, it's, it's, it's got some decent output, but it requires three people to get the most out of. Um, so if you're against, like, a solo fighter, um, you got a chance. Like, you got a chance. You definitely have a chance to push it away and try to get out. Um, so it's got a medium level of area denial. Uh, then you have the Caterpillar, which, to be honest, quite surprised me when we started bringing it up for testing. Um, the t the, like, the Caterpillar is not designed to be in a fight. But its turrets do have two size fours, and those turrets can do quite a bit of damage if you're not careful. So it does deny a bit of area. I'd say it denies a bit more area than the MSR, except for it trades maneuverability for tank, right? So shields will keep you alive for only so long. I'd say you're still just as screwed in a multi crew ship. And also, guys, make sure you understand all these multi crew ships. Regardless of if, whether it's S tier, A tier, B tier, doesn't matter. All these multi crew ships <laughs> lose to a pack of two or three fighters. Every single one of them, right? So even though it's the best of the multi crews, a pack of you know fighters, three hornets, um, two hornets, um, you know even one hornet if the pilot's good, uh, will absolutely mangle any of these multi crew ships. And we'll get into why a little bit later here, right? Um, then we move over last in D tier was the uh, Reclaimer. Sorry. Um, the Reclaimer's got a lot of area denial, like a lot. It has a couple, a bunch of remote turrets that get slaved to the, um, the, the operator. Um, and I find that if you're not careful and it's fully crewed, here's the trick here, right? If it's fully crewed, um, it does have all those turrets running and it can be quite dangerous. It can be quite dangerous to, to a pack of fighters. So, it's got a decent amount of area denial. Unfortunately, I find that once the shields are down, it dies almost immediately. Um, if you've got heavy ballistics on the field with another multi-crew ship, you can just bypass the shields and start hitting it. And the, the Reclaimer, although it looks big and tough, is not big and tough. So that's really what kind of kicks it in the butt. And it's very large and very slow. Um, fighters have a very easy time just swarming it and killing it. Um, like everything so it definitely needs some work although it does deny a decent amount of area so you got to be careful if you get too close to it um and the turrets lock on you you could uh find yourself floating home <laughs> then we have c tier we have the cutty steel now this is going to surprise some people the cutty steel has a hundred and fifty thousand hit points think about that for a second one hundred and fifty thousand hit points the Mark II Hornet has 20,000 hit points. Let that sink in for a second. <laughs> so the Cuddy Steel, whether it's a glitch or they intended this to happen, I don't know. Um, the Cuddy Steel is tough as nails. It's tough as steel. <laughs> 
I think personally, a lot of the cutties should kind of follow in suit like this. I think the amount of hit points on the cutty steel may or may not be intended, but the point is it's there. It's here, guys, and that's what we're explaining is, you know, we're going to tell you what's out there. So the cutty steel, out of all the cutties in the family, the black, the blue, the red, the cutty steel is the best right now in terms of if you're going to choose a cutlass to enter PvP and do multi-crew with, it's the cutty steel. Plus you have the front player guns, like the pilot guns, plus the turret, plus the co-pilot's turret on the back. So you have full coverage over, over what's going on with you. But I gave it a low area denial score because the guns aren't super threatening. The cutty isn't super fast, you know. And so a lot of its DPS, you know, is, is required by its nose being on you and, and like it fighting you personally. So I found that, you know, even though it has one turret that has the two size threes and the little back turret has, I think, two little size twos, the back turret's not really going to be doing much. It can only deny a small area behind it. It's mostly just to push fighters away that are chasing it. At least that's probably the intent. Um, you know, so definitely needs a little more coverage. There are blind zones underneath, like anything underneath the cutlass is a blind spot, right? So if you have the belly of the cutlass and you're shooting up into it, it can't hit you. So there's a huge blind spot there that it can't deny any area. And, you know, good pilots will know how to shoot for that blind spot and shoot up India. So it, you know doesn't really deny the area it should then we have the carrick which honestly broke my heart <laughs> it really did because the carrick used to be a really great multi-crew ship um but then after master modes it got real slow um it doesn't really have a lot of options now it does have decent turret coverage there really is no blind spots if you have the top port starboard and dorsal um oh sorry ventral uh, turrets manned there are no blind spots on the carrick there's nowhere that you can go that is out of the turrets arc except for if you're like directly behind the engines at like 50 meters but that's not you're not going to hold that position in any kind of fight so <sighs> for area denial those size four guns can do some damage it's basically two hammerhead turrets because you've got eight size four guns two 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 and two you know like it's 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 a decent it's a decent amount of damage so you can't sleep on the carrick's area denial but that just means you just attack it from distance and there you go there's your kill <laughs> and then we go up to the constellations now this is where things start getting interesting because these ships start having size five guns now the thing you guys got to understand about size five guns is they are significantly more threatening than the size fours so the connie has four five love size five forward facing pilot manned guns that's a lot of damage like those four size fives are a, like it's a considerable amount so we found that during our testing which we recorded and we were goofing around with the connie was winning fights against carrick's um and basically everything c d e and f like it was just it was just winning fights because by the time the shields on the Connie would start to fail, the size five guns would have ripped apart, um, you know, a lot of these ships down there. And if you're thinking, well, the 600i, blah blah, look, we tested it. The 600i got absolutely mangled. <laughs> as soon as the shields went down, it was like bang bang boom, just dead. So we found that the the 600i also being quite slow, the Connie could actually. Like, I'm not lying. The Connie could actually get in there and outrate the 600i if you have a decent Connie pilot. I did it myself a couple times. The Connie, although it is quite large, does have a decent turn rate, you know, for its size. So the 600i got absolutely mangled. And also, by the time the 600i got close enough to the Connie, the um, absolute deluge amount of missiles being fired is is something to consider as well the connie has an insane amount of missiles the thing is just packed with missiles so unfortunately the 600i does not have anywhere close to the amount of missiles the connie does <laughs> uh, and if you can get the snub fighter working i mean that's the dub just in and of itself so um also we have the the retaliator which People have been sleeping on the Retaliator. The Retaliator is super tough. 
It has six size two shields. That's 30,000 hit points of shields. Plus it's like hundred and something thousand um, armored hit points on the body. And people don't realize this, but there are a lot of turrets on a retaliator and they have size two and size three guns. So this thing is covered in turrets. It also has size nine torpedoes so that if you're lucky or you're good, you can actually guide those torpedoes in on bigger ships above it, right? Although the reliability differs between different pilots, but, um, you know, those size 9 torpedoes pack a huge punch. So it's definitely a very fun ship. I think of all the ships to multi-crew, the Retaliator definitely is one of my favorite, especially in any kind of PvP engagement. Um, it's just a lot of fun. And it has size 3 guns, lots of them. So it can deny a decent amount of area. There's no real blind spots. The problem with the Tally is it just doesn't have really hard hitting heavy guns to maximize the limited time that fighters are going to give you um, when they're actually close enough to be hit. So definitely something to consider. If you have a multi crew with your friends, I definitely do. It's a lot of fun. Um, then we have the Corsair. Corsair is super popular. A lot of people have Corsairs. Terrible ship. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing good about the Corsair is it's got a lot of forward-facing firepower, like the Connie. Um, it's got its two turrets on the side, but as soon as you get outside of the turn of the of the Corsair, game over. It it's like once you take the pilot guns away from it, um, it's bad news bears. And I have outrated Corsairs in the constellation. So it's a it's a it's a close fight. It really depends on the commander for the Connie or the or the Corsair, but you know, it, I I like the dynamic between the two. The Corsair definitely is more I guess you could say rugged. It gets up there and it's just all forward facing firepower. You get on target, but <laughs> try it for yourself and find out. But its area denial score is very low. There are blind spots on the Corsair that the Connie doesn't have, so. To, the way I see it is the Connie can hit you no matter where, like no matter what it's doing, it can hit you. If it's spinning, rolling, turning around, whatever, there is going to be a turret that can hit you. The uh, the Corsair, anything gets behind it and it starts losing its, um, there are blind spots directly behind it. I find that the Corsair just needs a little more, I guess you could say, it needs a rear turret is really what it needs. It needs another turret on the rear to kind of keep its back covered. So either that or they need to give it much more speed. Um, but hey, that's just me. Uh, then we move finally to our last B tier ship, the Starfare Gemini. Now the Starfare was quite a surprise. A lot of people are like, well, Starfare is super tough. Yeah, it's really tough. Lots of shields. It's got a size five turret on top. So it's got two size five guns that can articulate um, and turreted size five guns are much better because they have an independent power source so they can just move and bang 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 shoot 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 hey i'm telling you that, that size five turret absolutely slaps it's a really interesting fight between a connie and a and a and a, and a starfire gemini i find it really interesting um if you haven't tried it guys you should definitely try it the the dynamic between the the slowness and the largeness of the gemini and it's size five turret, you know, plus it's got this four facing size four guns. And if you try to get behind it, it can deny you with turrets on the back as well. So I find that there are no real blind spots, you know, again, no real blind spots on the Starfare except for directly below it. Uh, well, actually, no, not really, because you got turrets there. So, you know, it, it's got a lot of turret pressure on the top and in front of it. And then everything else is kind of mid in terms of its potential to push fighters away because it's got those size 3 turrets. Um, but I find in PvP, any smart group of fighters is going to try to hang out in the area where the turrets have the least pressure, which is directly below it or just kind of behind it. Um, and then, yeah, sure, the turrets will put pressure on those fighters, but um, is it going to be enough to push them away for the amount of time and that kind of stuff, right? So... Um, Definitely, I think, ironically enough, the turret systems either need to change um, so that we can actually start applying damage with turrets more effectively. Um, and that all comes down to distances and ranges and stuff. But the, um, <laughs> the Starfare is surprisingly good. 
surprisingly good. I mean, all the ships below it, you know, the Carrick, uh, the, all these ships below it, try fighting in a fully crewed, don't forget guys, it's got to be fully crewed, fully crewed Gemini um, versus any of those ships in the previous tiers. You'll see very quickly why the Starfare can slap. It's, it's quite impressive. Um, then we get into A <laughs> and S tiers. Now, this is quite surprising. Um, and I'm going to show you a video here in a second uh, that kind of shows you what the dynamic between these ships is. I assumed that the, the Aegis Hammerhead would be the winner. I thought for sure it's got, you know, six, uh, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, six quad size four guns. Like, it's that's an insane amount of DPS. Um, you've got two size three shields. I thought, there's no way. Well, yes way. <laughs> <laughs> the A2 absolutely kicks the pants off of the hammerhead. It kicks the pants off of it, right? Um, because what happens is if, if the pilot in the A2 is relatively competent enough to keep the enemy hammerhead or any multi crew ship it's engaging lower than the horizon line, so if you were to imagine looking in the cockpit you have your crosshair for the nose of your ship it has those four little dots two horizontal or two vertical two horizontal if you were to draw a line in that horizontal plane anything on that line or below is what your turrets can hit anything on that line or above your turrets can't they can't get up so what happens is if you always position your a2 so it's just shooting down onto the target you have qu two size five gimbal turrets plus a whole whack of other size four turrets, the amount of firepower that comes out of the A2 is absolutely ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And you've got two size three shields. So you've got a ton of shields. And again, the disparity between size five and size four guns is very noticeable. It's, it's very noticeable. So if you're good enough to just keep those guns in the right spot, the amount of damage that you push out in the A2 is is obscene, um, as you can see from this example here. Um, you know, so <laughs> I know we skipped A tier kind of in a bit here, but the A2 came as a surprise. Try it for yourself, guys. The A2 is absolutely monstrous. Now, I will say this. It depends on your situation. The A2 is the best multi-crew ship. So if you're engaging another group of players and they have a hammerhead that's fully crewed, don't take shit from them. You're in the A2. You're going to win that fight. You just got to keep it above the horizon line so that your guns can shoot down on it. Um, but the hammerhead fighting a group of other fighters, like if you're coming up against, um, fight, like say you're at Jump Town or Scout Post Korea or Ghost Hollow, you're going to have an easier time defending yourself in a hammerhead. That's why it has a very high area denial score. And the A2 has a lower area denial score. Because you can deny anything below you. But anything above you on the A2, you can't deny at all. It's a really big blind spot. So if you can actually get the ship rolled over to deny that space, any fighter that's below you within 500 to 1,000 meters, if your turret gunners are switched on, will just evaporate people <laughs> like they'll just be like and this guy there and, and it's gone right it's a vanguard it'll be like bang 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 dead like it'll just be dead so definitely a much better choice in terms of if you're coming into a situation where there's going to be a lot of fighters but if you're in a group of people and you have your own fighters and you have an enemy squadron that has their fighters and a hammerhead and you have an a2 the a2 is going to win that fight it will win that fight. And there's also something risky, but also interesting that you can do. If it's in atmosphere, you can drop a bomb and fly away. And if the bomb gets close enough to said hammerhead or multi crew ship, you can just shoot it and it'll detonate <laughs> and kill your target as well. It's a very risky strategy. We've done it a couple times. I wouldn't recommend it, guys. It takes a lot of practice, but it is something that you can do. It's an option on the table that you can use that a hammerhead can never have access to, right? So it's just something you can try. And then we have the Redeemer. Now the Redeemer, um, I thought would be lower on the tier list, but 
quite frankly, it's dual size five guns and then the pilot control guns and then the little turret on the front is a substantial amount of DPS. And if you think about it, for the price of one hammerhead that's fully crewed, you can have two redeemers fully crewed. In my personal opinion, you'd be better off bringing two redeemers because it takes the same manpower than a single hammerhead that's fully crewed, right? Because having four turreted size five turrets plus a bunch of other guns in two redeemers side by side, those two redeemers can cover each other. They can actually deny more space than a single hammerhead. So if you're going to bring multi crew ships to the field, I would bring two redeemers instead of one hammerhead for the same amount of manpower. But if you want to do the hammerhead, you can. I'm just saying it's 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 a better use of manpower to optimal outcome, in my opinion. As any fleet commander knows, you want to have you want to maximize the amount that you can accomplish with the least amount of people. So two redeemers is significantly more effective than a single hammerhead um, because you have so much more flexibility and you're basically shooting into four size three shields because the two redeemers you got to get through all those hit points whereas a hammerhead it's only got two size threes so you actually have to burn through more shielding to kill those six people than it does on a hammerhead Do you know what i mean you're starting to see the math here so either the hammerhead needs to be downgraded in terms of how many people are necessarily supposed to be on it or the hammerhead needs to be upgraded because if for seven people to be on a ship, like it's a waste of people, you know, um, because you could have seven people crewing two redeemers, which will be significantly more effective than one. So just something to consider. Um, but <clears throat> the redeemer won all the battles versus the constellation uh, <clears throat> Corsairs, all these ships. Um, we tested it many times. The Redeemer wins them all. Um, it, I think it's really, really because the size 5 guns are so much more powerful than the size 4s, right? But, um, you know, as you guys are watching some of these glory shots here, um, you can kind of get a sense of it. But that, my friends, is the PvP tier list for 323 for multi-crew ships that require 3 crew or more. Okay, I know people say, well, where's the free, you know, where's the freelancer? Where is this? That requires two people. And yes, you could argue the freelancer has a co-pilot and a turret gunner, so technically that's three. But the way I see it is this is a tier list of three people in the sense that each person is gonna have a dynamic role in the fight. Whereas if you have a freelancer that has a co-pilot, you're not really doing anything meaningful in the fight. You're not manning a turret, you're not increasing the, the DPS of the ship. So what ends up happening is you have a body on the ship, but it's not doing anything. So I didn't really count the freelancers until there's more co-pilot or engineering gameplay that facilitates that. Um, we're going to stick to these ships that are three people or more because they obviously require, you know, a pilot and then two people that are meaningfully manning turrets and, and contributing to the fight or more. It could be three or more. I mean, retaliators, more hammerheads, more that kind of stuff. So. Anyway, folks, this was just my opinion. I hope you understand where I'm coming from. I hope this helps you understand the choices that you have in the Persistent Universe in Master Modes 323. And so that when you're going through and deciding which ship you want to bring to the field, you can kind of think to yourself, well, what situation am I going into? What's What stuff I want to do? And then also when you come across other ships in the Persistent Universe, you kind of know if your ship is capable or it has the edge to win a fight. So it's not to say that if you're in a MSR, Crusader MSR, um, Mercury Star Runner, that you can't kill an A2 Hercules. It's just when skill is equal and both ships have their maximum amount of crew, you're probably going to lose that fight. <laughs> and we did a lot of testing. You know, we did a lot of fights against these ships to really kind of get a good idea of where they sit in that hierarchy. But again, guys, this is my personal opinion. This is done through hours of testing in player versus player. Um, so take it with a grain of salt. If you feel like the tier list is wrong or whatever, that's totally okay. Like, that's fine. You're allowed to disagree, guys. Just be respectful, have some fun with it. And hopefully this list helps you understand what your options are. 
But like I always said, guys, take a look at that video if you want to see what multi crew looks like in Star Citizen at its absolute peak. I just want to say thank you again for all the love and support on the stream and the video, guys. I couldn't do this without you. It really makes a difference. And thank you again to everyone who made it up for the Sick Kids charity stream that we did. We raised $26,000 for sick kids. So be ready to see um, myself and Crucian go to the hospital and deliver the carts ourselves. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll see you in the next video. I was Avenger1. I'll see you later.